Let's explore chemical equations. We are going to look at the mathematics of chemical formulas and we are going to look at the process of balancing the type of equations. To remind ourselves, a chemical reaction takes place and evidence of chemical reactions could be formation of a gas, like bubbling and fizzing. Evidence of a chemical reaction could include the formation of a solid precipitate the solid, the disappearance of a solid, dissolving, color changes, or heat being given off or absorbed, exothermic and endothermic reactions. A chemical equation represents changes in the bonding and energy that occur during a chemical reaction. Qualitative and quantitative changes are recorded during this chemical equation. A number called a coefficient is placed before formulas to indicate the ratio of moles or molecules involved in the reaction. The coefficient 1 is never written, but is understood. Equations are always balanced to conform to the laws of conservation of mass and charge. So for instance, let's take the example of the formation of water, where we have 2H2 plus O2 yielding 2H2O plus heat. In this case, on the left of the equation, we have the reactants, hydrogen and oxygen. On the right of the equation, we have the products, water and heat being released. This equation tells us a lot. For example, we are given all of this information. We have hydrogen combining with oxygen to form water, it takes four hydrogen atoms for every two oxygen atoms to create six atoms total in the two molecules of water. It takes two molecules of hydrogen, H2, to combine with one molecule of O2 to make two molecules of the water, H2O. Likewise, it takes two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen to create two moles of water, and that energy is being liberated or released. So let's try balancing an equation. Here we have a molecule of nitrogen combining with a molecule of hydrogen to make a molecule of ammonia, NH3. We note that nitrogen and hydrogen are both diatomic atoms, meaning that in their standard gaseous state they will be N2 and H2 having two atoms, diatomic, di meaning two atomic atoms, two atoms per molecule. First thing we do is do an atom inventory for the reactants and an atom inventory for the products. To begin with, we have two atoms of nitrogen, two atoms of hydrogen, one atom of nitrogen in the products, and three atoms of nitrogen of hydrogen in the products. We can change this by placing a coefficient of 2 in front of the NH3, giving us two atoms of nitrogen to balance the two atoms of nitrogen in the reactants. This, however, makes six atoms of hydrogen, which are balanced by placing a 3 in front of the H2 molecule, giving us six total atoms of hydrogen. When each side has an equal amount of atoms, due to the law of conservation, we now have a balanced chemical equation. If we take Sb antimony plus Cl2 chlorine to make SbCl3 antimony chloride, we also note that chlorine is again one of the diatomic molecules, so therefore in its gaseous state it's Cl2. Beginning with our atom inventory, we see that we have one antimony and two chlorine. And in the products, we have one antimony and three chlorine. In order to balance this, we are going to put a three in front of the chlorine and a two in front of the antimony, changing the values to two atoms of antimony and six atoms of chlorine. We can now balance that with a two as the coefficient in front of the antimony chloride, giving us two atoms of antimony and six atoms of chlorine in the products. Here we now have a balanced chemical equation. 
For the case of aluminum bromide combined with potassium sulfate to yield potassium bromide and aluminum sulfate, we again begin with the atom inventory of reactants and products. We have one aluminum, three bromine, two potassium, and I like to keep the polyatomic ions together and we see that the sulfate shows up on both sides so we're able to do this. So we have one sulfate in the reactants but we have three sulfates in the products. To balance this equation we're going to begin by placing a 2 in front of the aluminum bromide, changing the aluminum value to 2 and giving us 6 bromine. We're going to place a 3 in front of the potassium sulfate giving us 6 potassium and 3 sulfates. Now to finish this, we balance it by placing a 6 in front of the potassium bromide to give us 6 bromine, 6 potassium, and we now have a balanced chemical equation. So here we have iron plus hydrochloric acid to give us iron chloride and hydrogen gas. Why don't you turn off the tape the video. Try this on your own and when you have a balanced chemical equation turn the video back on and check how you did. So let's see how you did. In order to balance this we should end up with a balanced chemical equation that simply changes by placing a coefficient of 2 in front of the hydrochloric acid. This balances the 2-chlorine and the 2-hydrogen on the product side. So let's look at another sample problem. Here we have magnesium combining with oxygen gas to produce magnesium oxide. So go ahead and try this on your own. Turn off the video. When you have a balanced chemical equation, turn the video back on and check how you did. So let's see how you did. Magnesium plus oxygen to give us magnesium oxide. In order to balance this, we place a 2 in front of the magnesium and a 2 in front of the magnesium oxide. This gives us 2 magnesium, 2 oxygen on the product side, on the reactant side, and with 2 MgO, we have 2 magnesiums and 2 oxygens on the product side. We now have a balanced equation. Let's try one more sample. Here we have potassium chlorate breaking down in decomposition to create potassium chloride plus oxygen gas. So go ahead and try this one on your own. Turn off the video now. When you're finished, turn the video back on and check how you did. So let's see how you did. The potassium chlorate yielding potassium chloride and oxygen gas is balanced by placing a 2 in front of the KClO3. This gives us 2 potassium and 2 chlorine along with 6 oxygen. To balance this we add a 2 in front of the potassium chloride the KCl giving us 2 potassium and 2 chloride and then the 3 in front of the O2 to give us the 6 oxygen necessary to balance this chemical equation. I hope this was helpful in getting you prepared to balance chemical equations. But like anything, take some time, find some more chemical equations, balance them, and keep this as you will need it throughout the rest of the semester.